In today's video, we're going to learn how to install and use OneDrive on Mac in a couple of easy steps. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up and if you're in a supercharged way as your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. That being said, let's get straight into this. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to download OneDrive on our Mac. And that's really easy. We're just going to open up the App Store and then we're going to go to the search section and simply type in OneDrive and hit enter. You see the first option that pops up is OneDrive and you can simply select on the get option. I've already downloaded it before. So I've got this little download icon, but if you see where the cloud is on yours, it should say get. You simply wanna open that up and then download it. It'll take a couple of seconds to download and you'll have OneDrive starting to install on your Mac. All right, now that OneDrive has downloaded it, we're simply gonna select on open. This dialog box is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you to pop in your Microsoft account. So this is your Microsoft email address. Pop that in and hit sign in. Of course, you'll have to put your password in as well if you haven't signed in on your Mac before. Next, it's gonna go through some T's and C's like the privacy, so you just simply can go next. You can choose to send optional data to Microsoft about how the application is running. I like to send the data, but if you don't want to, you can choose do not send optional data. This does not impact your uh, usage of OneDrive at all. So let's go okay. And then now we're gonna choose where our OneDrive folder is gonna save on our Mac. So we're gonna open up choose OneDrive folder location. And the default location is just on your computer here with your music, your pictures, your desktop, all that sort of stuff. I actually think this is a great location and I'm simply gonna go choose. If you wanted to change it though, you could go ahead and drop this option down and find a different place on your computer to where you wanna save it. I think this is pretty logical though. And of course, if you wanna create a new folder to store it in, you could do that as well, but I'm simply gonna select on choose this location and it's gonna give me the directory under users, my computer or Aldo's Mac, and then OneDrive. You can choose to change location if you selected the wrong one, but if you're happy with that, simply select on next and your OneDrive is starting to load. This bit here where it says getting to know your OneDrive, this is actually really important, so I'm gonna walk you through it. Uh, of course, there's things like file sharing and uh, folder sharing, and then of course, you can choose to download files offline, which means you can work on them when you're actually not connected to the internet. Uh, and then of course, it's gonna ask you to download to your mobile as well, up to if you're gonna do that or not. And now it says OneDrive is ready to, to use. So let's open up our OneDrive folder. And two things I'm gonna walk you through here. The first one here on our find window is that we can actually see our favorites icon. And underneath that we have our iCloud and the locations. I'm actually gonna right click on OneDrive and I'm gonna bring it up to our favorite section because I like having access to it all the time, just makes it easier for me. And then of course, in the top section of our Mac operating system with our dates and things like that, you have the OneDrive symbol as well. If you right click on the OneDrive symbol, this will actually show you the settings of your OneDrive. So you can go into your preferences, it will show you if things are syncing or not. Uh, you can choose to open the folder, view it online, go to your bin, upgrade if you wanna pay for more OneDrive storage. You can also choose to pause OneDrive syncing. So if you're on a metered connection, you can choose to pause it for two, eight or 24 hours. And I'm also gonna go into here in the little settings cog in the top right hand corner, our preferences. So if you go into the preferences in OneDrive, there's a few settings here that you can play around with. The first two are open at login and hide dock icon. I believe having both those ticked is really smart because that means OneDrive is gonna run in the background when you first turn on your computer, but you're not gonna get an icon at the dock. And then of course, warn you before uh, you delete any files and they're removed from the cloud. That just makes sense that if you accidentally delete a file, you at least get a warning beforehand. You can choose to save your screenshots to OneDrive. So if you do wanna do that, you totally can. And then of course, at the bottom here, you have files on demand. If you wanna download all your OneDrive files onto your computer and have them always stored locally as well, you can choose the second option of download all OneDrive files now but I wouldn't recommend this, especially if you have lots and lots of OneDrive. My main account has over 400 gigs of files on OneDrive. And if I chose to download everything to my computer, I'd instantly fill up all the hard drive space on my PC. So what I'd recommend is using the files as you need them, which is the top option here. And that's called files on demand. We're gonna go through that in a second. What I wanna talk about now though, is if you have multiple OneDrive accounts. So if you have multiple OneDrive accounts, if you wanted to add them to your computer, you unfortunately cannot. So if I go into OneDrive here, preferences, and then uh, the settings cog, and then preferences, and I go on the account section, you'll see this is where you can actually uh, manage and unlink your computer, delete your account, all that sort of stuff. 
or you have the option here of add an account. If you select on add an account and put in a personal address, unfortunately, you're gonna get an error saying you already have one account connected to your computer. Um, so you can't have two personal OneDrives on the one PC or the one Mac. What you can do though, is go into this section here, put in your business account. So if you have a OneDrive for work and you can have a OneDrive for work and a OneDrive personal, both connected to your Mac at the same time. If you wanted to go ahead uh, and open up OneDrive and the preferences tab one more time, and go into your account setting. You can also choose what folders you want available on your Mac. So if you have a lot of folders on your OneDrive, but you don't want all of them showing up, you can go here and simply select on choose folders. And then, well, my OneDrive demo one doesn't have a list of folders on here. Uh, but if it did, you would have all the folders to choose from. Uh, so if you use OneDrive, you can definitely go through this and just tick all the folders that you want sorted. So now that we're in OneDrive, I want to talk about sharing and keeping files on your PC or on your Mac, and of course, keeping them online. You can see in the, uh, in OneDrive here on the right hand side, there is this little cloud icon with the download button next to all of our folders here, or files, and it says not downloaded. As soon as we open up any of these files, though, it will start downloading it to the PC, uh, downloading it to the Mac, and that will keep it as a local file on demand uh, file, which means that it will no longer have that download symbol, it'll be stored on the PC, and it will be there as a file on demand. What that means is that it'll download when you need it and will stay cached on your computer for a certain period of time. And when OneDrive realizes you're not using it anymore, it'll take the local copy off your hard drive, it'll stop uh, using hard drive space, and it'll push it back online. As soon as you open up again, of course, if you connect to the internet, that is, it will open up and it will download for you to start working. If you wanted to keep a document on your computer at all times, even when you don't have Wi-Fi or internet, what you want to do is right click on that file. And then you can actually choose the option of always keep on this device. So if we go down the bottom here, you can see there's a range of OneDrive settings here, like always keep on this device, which means if you turn this on, it will download, you can see there's a little syncing symbol here, and it will always store it on your computer. Uh, so now you have this little tick next to that file, meaning it is always downloaded. The little people symbol next to three of these files also means that these are shared files, so multiple people have access to them. If we right click on that file again, and choose to free up space, that means it's not gonna be always stored on this device, and it's gonna push it back online and only download it when you need it. If you wanted to share a file from your OneDrive, you'd simply right click on it, scroll down to where it says share or copy link. For now, I'm gonna choose on share. A dialog box is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you to add in the details of the person, the name or the group you wanna share it with. And then you can choose, does anyone with the link have access to it or only specific people? And do they have the ability to edit or only view? So this is where you choose how you wanna share the file. And then of course, you can give them an expiry date if you pay for the OneDrive Premium or Microsoft 365. And of course, you can choose to set a password as well. But these two symbols here mean you need to unlock these features by paying for premium. If we go back, you can also see who already has access to the video or to the file. Um, and then of course, you can choose to simply copy that link, or you can put in the details here, write a message and send it and that'll go via email but that's how you share through OneDrive as well. If we right click on this file one more time, you can also scroll down and actually manage access and view the version history. So who's been editing and who has access to the file. And if you go view online, this will take you to the online version of where this document lives. If you wanted to go to your OneDrive online as well, the easiest way to do that is simply selecting on your OneDrive cloud and then scrolling down where you can choose to open your OneDrive folder, view online or your recycling bin. If we select on view online, this will open up the web browser and this will show you all your OneDrive files. And there you have it. Is that easy to download, install and use OneDrive on your Mac? Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And if you're on a supercharged way your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.